Deborah Myberg, and I'm with Colin Campbell of Campbell's. Now, Campbell's is known for some of the most astonishing sticky wines in the world. Uh, tell me a little bit about the family, and then could you help me out understanding all the classifications of stickies coming from Rutherglen? I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm a fourth generation winemaker, uh, and we now have the fifth generation working in the winery. Uh, this is in child labour, the fifth generation. No, no, okay. no, no, these are mature. <laughs> children who had to earn their way into the business. Mm. They weren't given a job, they had to earn their way in and be qualified in certain areas. And uh, we've been there for 143, 143 years. The stickies, as we, we can refer to them, or we call them the fortified wines, they're a real speciality of Rutherglen. Mm -hmm. And they would probably most, be the most uh, highly pointed wines in the world if you looked at it on, on an aggregate basis. Oh. They're just amazing and we have, uh, uh, in our generation we've introduced a classification system. The four classifications, the young, which is called rather clean, uh, and the next one is called classic, the next one is called uh, grand, and this one that we're looking at, if you smell it, that's our rare. And they're just beautiful wines. Rare indeed. So what what gives your wines this incredible complexity, the deep colour? Uh, it's, it's age, basically, and this is where the, the old families come in because past generations have handed these wines down to us and we don't own them. We are custodians of these wines to take them and hand them on to the next generation. And it's just by just careful blending and just looking after the wines that we, once you get the blends, the, this sort of colour and uh, intensity, you just, just have to make sure we maintain that quality. And what's it like holding inventory for that long? I mean, that's that's expensive. It's, it's very costly, uh, and the accountants don't like us <laughs> because it doesn't look good on our books, but they're just such a special wine, and we hope that by proper promotion and uh, hope that's what we're trying to do, promote them that they'll become well known and the sales will go up and that will stimulate even more growth in this particular product. And how are the grapes handled after harvest? After harvest they're picked, uh, they're uh, fermented for a very short period of time, then we press the juice away from the skins. That juice is then uh, fortified, as we call it, with grape spirit, up to a level of 7.5% alcohol. That stops the fermentation, and so then you have a very naturally, very sweet, naturally uh, sweet wine, which is stable and won't ferment any further. And then they're just aged in the three or three or slurer process. Now you can't drink rare every day, so I understand you're producing some other wines on the property. Yeah, this uh, rather than very, uh, we're, we're very well known for our Jurif, and Jurif is very. Uh, uh, That's Petit Sirah. Petit Sirah, we call it that. We call it Jurif, and it's only grown in uh, California and in, the, in Australia. And rather than has the old old rootstocks, and we've started in the last 20 years to really promote that, and that's doing, doing some amazing things too. We're going to look at that after, when you're finished. <laughs> Sounds great. I look forward to it.